The next section in the formulation of quantum mechanics is measurements, observables, and uncertainty relations. We will start with measurements. In this session, we'll, we shall talk about measurements, probabilities, and expectation values. So expectation values is another word for average value. We have developed the mathematics of Ket spaces. Okay? Now let's discuss the quantum theory of measurement processes. We'll start with the words of Dirac himself. So this is what Dirac says, a measurement always causes the system to jump into an eigenstate of the dynamical variable that is being measured. Okay, so the idea is that the act of measurement, or right, the act of measurement actually changes the state of the system. Right? This is something we don't have in classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, the measurements do not, so by measurement, you can actually determine the state of the system. In quantum mechanics, an act of measurement changes the state of the system, it changes the physical state of the system. So the meaning of statement is this, all right? A measurement always causes the system to jump into an eigenstate of the dynamical variable. By dynamical variable, what we mean is observable, all right? So we have used the word observable. So dynamical variable and observable stand for the same thing. We have seen that observables are represented by Hermitian operators. Okay, we have also mentioned in passing that uh, the measurement outcomes are the eigenvalues of the Hermitian operator. All right. So this statement says that if you measure an observable that is represented by operator A on a state, on a general state alpha, okay, get alpha. So the, this is the state alpha, and you are measuring the observable A. It could be energy, momentum, spin, anything, anything that you can determine by a measurement. All right. And what happens is that, according to this statement, the statement means that when you make a measurement of A on this state, the state actually changes to one of the eigenkets of this operator, changes to one of the eigenkets of the operator, okay? Now, there are a few problems with this thing, all right? It's not clear how this happens. We don't have an exact mathematical uh, relation to show the measurement process, all right? We just say that the state changes. Also, it's not clear what actually constitutes a measurement. Right? So the word measurement is also is not quite well defined. So all these are problems, and together these problems are referred to as measurement problems, referred to as the measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Okay? And there's no consensus as to what's the actual, what's actually happening during a measurement. Right? There are ideas, but there's no consensus. We don't know exactly what happens during a measurement. Right? So it's clear that there's at least an appearance of a state change. Okay, so we'll maintain that the state actually changes during a measurement, but we don't know why or how it changes. All right. Now this change is also often referred to as wave function collapse. Okay, or collapse of the wave function. Wave function collapse. Now we have not yet introduced the word wave function in our uh, in our lectures or in our classes. We'll be discussing the term wave function later on, okay, but just uh, in advance, I'll mention that this process, okay, what happens during a measurement in quantum mechanics is also referred to as wave function collapse, all right? So just add this to your vocabulary. So let's uh, go into a little bit more detail here. So suppose you are making a measurement of the observable that is represented by A, right? So Hereafter, we shall call this as the observable itself, right? It's an operator that represents the observable. Then now, hereafter, we shall call it the observable itself, okay? So suppose you are making a measurement of observable A on a state ket alpha, right? Ket alpha. Now, ket alpha is some arbitrary ket, and we know that the eigenkets of this observable, since this is a Hermitian operator, the eigenkets of this observable forms a basis, right? So in quantum mechanics, the base, basis vectors that we are interested in are the eigenkets of different Hermitian operators or the eigenkets of observables. All right? So since the eigenkets of this operator form a basis, we can uh, write this uh, arbitrary ket as a linear combination of all the base vectors. All right? So we write this linear combination as sum over A prime, C A prime, ket A prime. So we have expanded the given uh, ket as a linear combination of all the eigenkets of this observable that we want to measure, all right? Okay, now this also can be written as, we know that CA prime is the projection of alpha, it's 
the projection of alpha in the direction ket a prime. Okay, so we can also write this as sum over a prime ket a prime multiplied by the expansion coefficient which is given by bra a prime ket alpha. All right. Okay, so what's what's the state now? What can we talk? What can we say about the state now? Before a measurement of a, we have not yet measured a. All right. Before a measurement, the state is kind of spread out. All right. It's spread out over all the possible final states. The final state is one of ket a prime. Okay. So the idea is that before measurement of a, ket alpha is in general in a superposed state. So what happens during a measurement is that the superposition is lost and this ket of the state actually changes to one of the eigen kets of this observable, reduces to or changes to one of the eigen kets of the observable. So before measurement, it could be in a superposition, a superposition of all the eigen kets of operator A or observable A. After measurement, it reduces to one of the eigen kets of observable A. All right, so this is what Dirac, Dirac's words mean. So when the measurement is performed, the system is actually thrown into one of the eigenstates, say ket A prime of observable A. Okay, so we can write this like this. Oh, there's a typo here. This has to be ket alpha and the spelling of measurement is also wrong. I shall correct this in the notes. So let me write it here. So what happens? We can represent the measurement process like this. Initially, we have got ket alpha, which is in a superposition of all the eigenkets of observable A. Right? Now you are making a measurement of observable, which is represented by the operator A. And what happens after the observation is that it reduces to one of the eigenkets of this observable. So the superposition is lost due to the act of a measurement. Right? Due to the act of due to the act of measurement, the superposition is lost and it reduces to one of these uh, eigenkets. Okay, so sometimes, uh, as I said before, this is referred to as the collapse of the wave function because initially it's spread out, okay, the state is spread out, and it has reduced, it has collapsed to one of the uh, states in the superposition. All right, so this is what's happening during a measurement. Now, for example. A silver atom with an arbitrary spin orientation will change into either ket SZ plus or ket SZ minus when subjected to an SG apparatus of type SGZ hat. So if you send in this uh, silver atoms that we talked about in the stern garlic experiment into an SGZ hat apparatus. All right. So this measures the component of spin along the Z direction, which means that you are placing the magnetic field in the Z direction along the Z direction. So you send in a beam of atoms, you see that you'll either get atoms with, uh, which are characterized by SZ plus or you'll get atoms which are characterized by SZ minus. All right. So if you take a single atom, if you take a single atom, you'll see that it's either it has either it's either characterized by SZ plus or characterized by SZ minus. All right. So what happens, what has happened here is that Whatever the spin, whatever the orientation of this atom is, all right, whatever the spin orientation of the initial atom is, in the end, after this measurement process, you could think of this as a measurement process. After the measurement process, the state changes either to ket SZ plus or ket SZ minus. All right. So one thing you have to remember is that the measurement is actually happening on the screen. All right. So if you have SGZ hat, you, you have to actually send it to a screen right after this thing. So initially, before making the measurement, you should think of the atom as being in both beams simultaneously. But when, when you make a measurement, right, you'll either see the atoms here or here, never in between. So we, we talked about this. All right. OK, so this, this we have already seen. So the example says that the silver atom will change the state of the silver atom will change either into SZ plus or SZ minus. So if you are uh, if you are letting the atoms fall onto a screen, you'll see that they'll they'll fall onto a point corresponding to state SZ plus or on a point corresponding to state SZ minus. Okay. So we can say that the measurement usually changes the state of the system. So if the initial state is ket alpha, it has changed to ket a prime. All right. In the initial state is some arbitrary spin orientation. It has changed, say, 
to get a z plus okay this is this is what happens if you have measured a spin of plus h bar by 2 along the z direction now there's an exception to this we said that the measurement usually changes the state there's an exception to this the only exception is when the state is already in one of the eigenstates of the observables being measured all right now the idea is that it could be in any state right when you before you make a measurement the system could be in any state it could be in the state given by ket a prime itself now if you make a measurement of a on this state it doesn't change the state you will get back the state ket a prime itself all right this is certain so only when there's a superposition with respect to the eigen kets of the observable you want to measure only then the state changes all right if there's no superposition with respect to the eigen kets of the operator that you want to measure or eigen kets of the observable that you want to measure then there is no change in state right if it is in one of the eigen states of the observable that you want to measure all right if the state if the system is in one of the eigen states of the observable that you want to measure then there is no change of state then there is no change of state okay now I'll just add this if if initially if it is already in the state get a prime all right if you measure a on this state if you measure observable a on this state the measurement outcome would be the corresponding eigenvalue a prime would be the corresponding eigenvalue a prime with certainty all right now if it's in a general superposition of all these eigen kits of this form all right c a prime get a prime if I measure a on this state the outcome would be one of the eigenvalues of this observable. The outcome would be one of the eigenvalues of the observable. We don't know which, right? Before measurement, we don't know which eigenvalue we are going to get. Okay? It, it would be one of the eigenvalues. But if it's already in an eigenket of this observable, then we are sure to get the corresponding eigenvalue as a measurement outcome. Okay. So when the measurement causes ket alpha to change into ket a prime. It is said that a the observable a is measured to be a prime okay this means that if the state has reduced or if the state has changed into an eigenket of observable a the measured value is corresponding eigenvalue the measured value of a is the corresponding eigenvalue okay? it is in this sense that the result of measurement yields one of the eigenvalues of the observables be observables being measured right of the observable being measured it is in this sense that the result of a measurement yields one of the eigenvalues of the observable being measured. So this is what's happening. When you make a measurement of A, it reduces to one of the eigenkets of this observable, all right? And the measured value is the corresponding eigenvalue. If it reduces to another ket, ket which is ket A double prime, not equal to ket A prime, then the measured value is the corresponding eigenvalue, which is A double prime, okay? 